Gentlemen, our sales in the Ozark Mountain District are giving me much concern. Our records show that a great number of musical instruments, mostly tubas and trombones, have been sold in that mountain country. But here's the rub. They make the first payment, and that's the last we ever hear from them. Oh, yes. And only this morning, we have another order from the town of Beaver Dam for a tuba. That's in the same locality. You're right. I'll tell you what we'll do, gentlemen. We'll have one of our men deliver the horn in person and have him collect for the other horns in this district. And if he fails in making the collection, bring back all the horns. That's uh, a very good idea. We'll send that young fella Chase. We were on the verge of letting him out anyway. How about it? I have proved that. Fine, all right then, Chase is the man. Oh, uh, just one minute. Please. Oh, good morning. Hey, what? Upper eight. Third on the right. Thank you. Uh, just leave those things on a platform. I'll take care of them. <laughs> but, my dear fellow, this horn is entrusted to my care. And where it goes, I go. Well, uh, that thing is too big to go through a little narrow passage. Well, uh... We... Uh, what's the number of my berth? Upper eight. Third on the right. Thank you. <laughs> Where there's a will, there's a way. How do you do, madam? Uh, my name is Chase. I represent uh, Murdoch and Company, one of the biggest mail on the house in the Middle West. I, uh, I'm an upper eight. I'm your neighbor. <laughs> Uh, the porter informs me that my uh, tube is too big to go through that little narrow passage, and I was wondering if you'd be so kind and condescending as to allow me to pass it through your berth, and when I run through the aisle, you can hand it to me. Thank you. <laughs> I just gave you, lady. You didn't give me any horn. Why, yes, I did, lady. I just gave you my tuba. Your what? My tuba, lady, my bass horn. Well, I didn't see any bass horn or tuba. Just a moment, madam. What did I just pass you through the window? What window? The little window in there. Well, all I got through that window was a draft. Now, you clear out of here. Now, lady, fun's fun, but I want my tuba. Oh, go sell your papers. I'm not selling papers, madam. <laughs> Say, listen, lady, will you please give me my tuba so I can go to sleep? Oh, lady, give him his tuba so as we can all go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> now, listen, madam. I'm representing Murdoch and Company, manufacturers of musical instruments, and I'm going to have that tuba. I don't believe you ever had a tuba. It's just an excuse to get acquainted. I beg. Ah! 
See here, partner. You saw me pass that window through that tube into that woman. I mean, you saw me pass that woman through that tube into that window. Listen, that horn isn't my care. And if that lady don't give me back that horn, I'll lose my position. I think... Uh, <laughs> my mother always told me to be careful of people on trains. Porter, how are we going to manage this? You get up first, and I'll hand everything up to you. Oh, fine. <laughs> Trying to get acquainted. <laughs> Porter. Mr. Porter. Yes. Say, listen, I'm in a little difficulty again. Uh, will you help me get this horn off my foot? <laughs> It was some job, too. Listen, I'm going to go turn in. All right, sir.
Wait a minute. I know what it is. Get off. Come on, Mr. Joe. Mr. Joe. Are you all right? Yes, I'm all right. Oh, that's fine. I was a little worried. You see, when the conductor threw my horn off the train, I didn't realize... Wait was... a minute. What's the matter? Does that horn belong to you all? Well, it don't exactly belong to me all, but the... I'm down here to deliver it. And I'm going to collect for a lot of other horns that are in this country, too, or else I'm going to take back the horns. You take my advice, mister. You better hide that tuba. Why should I hide it? You saved my life. I'm going to do you a big favor. Well, what do you mean? I... Oh, oh. <laughs> excuse me. I... I'll just slip on some clothes. <laughs> Tell me about them their horns. You just forget about them horns for a while. Oh, uh, Mr. Adams, I want you to meet my cousin from over the ridge, Lim Smith. Why, not old Zeb Smith, boy. Yes, sir. <laughs> Come on, I want you to meet some of the other folks. Okay. Be seeing you. Boys, I want you to meet my cousin from over the ridge. Lim Smith. 
No, no Sam, Sam Smith, boy. <laughs> yes, sir. Mr. <laughs> Sally, old Zeb Smith, boy, would like to go up and look at the Orchester. All right. <laughs> Hey, listen, honey. Which one of these fellas is half wheeler? That's him over there. Well, he's not playing a trombone or a tuba. In fact, none of them are playing trombones or tubas. Say, listen, what is the mystery about these trombones and tubas? I'll tell you all about it later. I don't believe that's Zeb Smith's boy. I've had my suspicions right along. What do you all say? Let's find out who he is. Why should they hide him? What's the... So you old Zeb Smith boy, eh? Yes, sir. I'm old Zeb Smith's boy. Well, Zeb Smith's boy was quite a singer. Oh, that is the other boy. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, they were both good singers. Well, you see, <laughs> one time... How about getting up there and ripping off one? Ripping it right off? Yeah. Well, yeah, come on, Lim. You can do it. But listen, I... Folks, we are now going to be entertained with a song by my cousin, Lim Smith. Now, Zeb Smith, boy. Yes, sir. Let me tell you the story of the cruelest man I've known. He cast his spell on every gal he met. His manner, it was gentle, but he had a heart of stone. His vows of love, he'd make them soon forget. Well, they called him Handsome Jim, and the gal sure flocked to him. But before long they discover his deceit. Just a wolf in sheep's clothing, just the kind of low-down cur that you wouldn't want an honest gal to be. Oh, handsome Jim. Oh, handsome Jim. good myself. <laughs> yeah. 
You ever see them before? Why, sure. That is, uh, no. <laughs> Just as I thought. Let's make way with him. Oh! Come here! Look! 